an absolutely massive vulture, probably the largest vulture you are going to see on these live safaris. It is a leopard faced sitting up on the top of the dead tree. So now we've had white backed and we've got a leopard faced vulture joining in with the rest of the scavenger crew. That is unusual. I mean, they're not, they're not, it's not unheard of, and we do see them every now and again, but it might be a new one for some of you to add to your bird list because I can't guarantee we're going to see one of these again anytime soon. I want to know why he's here. Oh, she can't really tell with vultures. I want to know why it's here. I can't see any sign of anything. I can't smell anything. I wonder, I guess it must have been based on a lion kill not far from here. Elizabeth, no, vultures generally don't eat bones, but they do eat bone shards. And that's just because even a, a lapid faced with its very, very powerful beak, it's not really capable of crushing. It might grate a little bit along the bone, but they're not really capable of crushing it. Which actually leads me to an interesting discussion about the unusual relationship that we don't think of between hyenas and vultures. Because the hyenas come through and crunch the bones and leave shards lying about and the vultures will then come and pick those up and it, very frequently that's the female vultures particularly when they're about to lay their eggs because it's a great way obviously of supplementing their calcium intake so vultures do eat shards of bone but they don't they can't crunch open the bone themselves so that makes it quite an important relationship between spotted hyena and vultures that nobody actually ever really thinks about or lions, I suppose, potentially, because lions do also crunch on bones. But there is, a, there is that relationship between the two of them. And it's one of the things that I once heard put forward as one of the reasons behind uh, the lowering in the number of vultures in the wild. People suggested that the, because the home range of the spotted hyena has become smaller and smaller, the vulture numbers, they're not getting the calcium that they need. I'm not sure if that isn't a bit of a stretch, but certainly it is an important reminder that we don't always necessarily understand all of the connections between the different animals. The biggest reason, of course, as usual, for the disappearance of our vultures is absolutely the poisoning of vultures and the poaching of vultures. Deborah, yes, there are deaths of vultures occasionally in the Kruger. The Kruger is absolutely massive. Oh, Dina, sorry, sorry, Dina. You're not Deborah at all, you're Dina. Um, it does happen. The Kruger is huge, and as intensive as the efforts are to keep all of the animals safe, it does occasionally happen that a waterhole is poisoned or a carcass that has been poisoned is put down to bait the vultures in. Unfortunately, of course, it, I mean, not, not just the fact that it gets vultures, it'll get all the scavengers as well. It really is something quite horrible. And the poison is fat stored, so even if the vultures recover, every time they go a little bit hungry, then they become ill again, those that have survived or haven't ingested too much poison into their systems. It's a horrible thought, isn't it? The reason that that happens is because there's an idea that vultures' brains will give you the ability to see into the future, because people believe that they predict where the actually see where the carcasses are. It's always, you know, it's very easy to love pathetic to things like and I'm not really talking about 